Casper. So this is part two. I've also done another video of everything I'll be taking for myself and I'll link that at the end of the video so you can watch that if you haven't already. And let's get into the video then. Having a horse that is fit for camp is really, really important. You need to make sure that if you're not taking your own horse or if you're taking a loan or lease horse, that you need to make sure well in advance with the owner that it's okay to take them for the week. You also need to make sure that they're fit enough. So I'd recommend doing lots of long trail rides to build up their stamina. And if you can, try riding them almost twice a day. When you arrive at the place where your camp is, you need to have your passport easily accessible because that will be one of the first things that they'll check to make sure that your horse is up to date with injections and so you also need to make sure that your horse isn't lame and that if your horse is shod that its shoes are fairly new none of the shoes are loose because it will be checked by a farrier I'd recommend probably taking around two or even three bales of hay just because they do get through hay really quickly because at my camp they're in a stable all week so whenever they're in their stable they're going to be eating hay so I'd recommend taking two or if you do have room in your trailer or horse box take a third one just in case just because I always find they get through hay so quickly the same applies for shavings however this year I'm only going to take two bales just because last year I didn't use any at all and the reason why is because the stable that I got allocated on the first day had so much shavings in, the banks were literally like all the way up the wall. Also, most of the time when Casper peed, it was in our lesson and things, so he didn't actually pee much in his stable. So I didn't actually have to use like any shavings really at all, apart from the free bale that we got given at the beginning. So that's why I'm only taking two, just because we do get a free bale at my camp. At your camp, you might have straw, or you might not even have to take any bedding at all, but at my camp, you can't have straw, you have to have shavings. You'll also need to take some feed for your horse to have over the week. In the blue bin here, I have Casper's competition mix. This is by the brand Dobson and Horrell, and the reason why I'm giving him competition mix is because over the last few days at camp, he usually gets really tired, and this is for a couple of reasons. One, because we're riding a lot, and two, because he is in a stable and he doesn't have fresh grass like he usually does at home. He does have quite a high sugar content, so that does mean he's getting a lot less energy than he usually would, so that's why I'm using a high energy feed. And then in the pink bin, I have some Alpha A. As I've said before in my rules of feeding, video whenever you feed a substrate you need to feed some chaff with it the reason is it makes them chew their food properly and it also is a good source of fiber and I also have a feed scoop for dishing out his food with now these mini feed bins I actually got from green DIY I really like them because they're a lot smaller than the average feed bin like these ones last year I actually took one of these feed bins and I'm so happy that I've got the smaller ones this year just because they are quite big and bulky and it does take up a lot of room in your trailer or horse box some people People take board and breakers for their horse. I have this horse licks mobility balancer just because Casper absolutely loves licking it. It's also really good if your horse doesn't like standing still, especially when there's lots of horses on the yard. Luckily Casper is actually pretty good at standing still and he's usually pretty good at being in a stable for a long time at camp because he's usually so tired he quite enjoys having the rest. This version is for healthy joints and everything and because I will be working Casper quite hard at camp this will be pretty good for him as we will be jumping a lot. I have given it to Casper now and he went a bit crazy after I gave it to him. I think this is basically just completely sugar so if you are wanting your horse to have some more energy then get this but if you do have a horse that is a little bit spicy sometimes it might not be best for you. And I'll also be taking a massive bucket of horse treats with me because Casper will be working so hard and definitely deserve them. I'll also be taking two hay nets to camp. This one is slightly larger and it has smaller holes so I'll probably be using this one during the night as it will last him and this smaller one here I'll probably be using it during the day just because it does have bigger holes and I know some people don't like using the ones with the bigger holes because they're worried that horse's hoof will go in I've never had that problem and if it does happen there's always people in the yard during the day if it's the yard girls or other people so this one I'll probably give to him in the horse box on the way to camp and he'll have it in a stable during the day and it's always good to bring two or even three just so then you've always got a spare hay net which is made because they get through hay so quickly because you're always really busy and sometimes you won't have time to make a hay net so just having one that's already made is so useful. Now you don't have to take a wheelbarrow because most people take a large bucket which they use to put their horses dirty shavings in and just because at our camp there's a big sort of truck and you can't really lift your wheelbarrow onto the truck but you can lift like a large bucket so I don't use my wheelbarrow at all for mucking out 
However, it is really useful when transporting hay nets or shavings as they can be quite large and bulky to carry. Now, it's always good to take some sort of brush with you for sweeping your horse's stable or the yard. I usually take two. One is just a short one, which I use for mainly doing in Casper's stable. And then the other is a larger yard brush. You do get points for how clean your yard is. So you definitely need to take some sort of brush with you. You also need a fork or shovel for mucking out with. Now, this isn't on my camp list, but it's so useful and it's just this little mini poo picker and I use it and I let everybody else use it at camp all the time especially when you do evening checks and they just have a little poo in their stable and you don't want to like lug your whole wheelbarrow or bucket or shovel over you can literally just use this and get rid of it the one thing that you definitely definitely need to bring with you is a muck bucket it's just a lot easier than having a wheelbarrow when moving it around and putting it onto the trailer where all the poo goes and everything and this is just a dark green colour so it doesn't get mixed up with any of the horse's water buckets and I've written muck bucket on with a silver sharpie. And of course I'll be taking my wash bucket with me for washing Casper and my tack. And obviously you'll need to bring some feed and water buckets. Here I just have two small ones, one for the morning and one for the evening. And I also have a larger water bucket for putting Casper's water in. And I've just written Casper's name on in this silver sharpie pen. And it actually looks really cool because from a distance it doesn't look like it has anything on it. And then when the light shines on it you can see his name. And of course I'll be taking my everyday tacks such as my saddle my girth, my stirrups, and of course my bridle. Now before you take it to camp, you need to make sure that all the stitching isn't loose and make sure that it's checked, as well as making sure that all your tack is clean. You'll probably know that I do have quite a lot of saddle pads and these are the ones I'll be bringing because my pony club only allows us to have neutral colours like black and grey and white or green because that's our pony club colours and these are the ones I'll be bringing with me because Casper gets so sweaty especially using one saddle pad for like one day they're usually like completely sodden and wet after they've been ridden twice a day and I don't want them to rub him so I am bringing like one for each day you don't have to but personally that's just what I like to do and I'll also be bringing my half pad I know not all horses have half pads this one's just from KM Elite and when I bought my saddle off the saddler they recommended having this half pad for my saddle and I just like it because it means that my saddle pads don't sort of rumple up underneath the saddle so it works really well and it also looks really cute it's also really important to take a saddle cover with you it's really good because it's sort of a waterproof material so it protects your saddle from any scratches and things like that now at my camp you have to keep your horses tucked in the yard girls lorry so i definitely recommend getting yourself some sort of metal saddle stand just so then you can put your saddle on it and it's also so useful for when you're tack cleaning and things and it also makes sure that your saddle doesn't end up on the floor and doesn't get like trodden on and things like that I usually take some sort of rug for Casper, which is usually his cooler, just in case it gets a bit chilly in the evening. And as you can see, I've just washed it so it's just hanging up to dry. However, Casper usually gets quite hot in his table sometimes, so I might not even use it and cause pain to myself because I know that he'll get so dirty at camp. Of course, you'll need to take your horse some sort of head collar. I just have two here, just in case one breaks. I have Casper's grey one, which I'll probably be using the majority of the week, and then I have his leather one with just a purple lead rope that I'll be used for travelling because I prefer to travel my horses in leather head collars. I'll also be bringing my tendon boots for using when jumping, and I also have another pair in navy. These boots are actually from Horse Equestrian with a Z, and they actually sell them really cheaply, and you can get them in loads of different colours. Here I just have my cross country tape and boots. I just like to protect my horse's legs, and the cross country tape prevents the boots falling off if the velcro or poppers does undo. Many camps say that you have to bring polo wraps or stable bandages along with some sort of gamji or fibre G or anything like that and personally I never take them just because I have passed my CNC plus test and that's the main reason why they like you to take them so then there is a stable management lesson where you learn how to do stable bandages then you do have some to use however this isn't like a really important essential or anything. Some people like to take them because if their horses are in a stable that their legs swell and they like to wrap them up and everything. I just personally don't. I've never had that problem and Casper's usually always fine. Other people, however, use these instead of travel boots. However, I just always use travel boots because they're a lot easier and it's a lot quicker. Of course, I'll be taking my grooming box and everything in my grooming kit. However, I do have a grooming box tour if you'd like to see everything in more detail. And because I am doing cross country, I'll be taking my studs and everything I'll need to put Casper's studs in. 
However, I do know not every horse has shoes and not every horse has studs, but I'll be taking mine. And you'll also need some sort of plaiting bands or a needle and thread. And of course, you'll need some sort of sweat scraper as well. At camp, you'll be washing lots of things very often if it's your horse or tack. So I definitely recommend bringing two to three sponges. These are just some really cute ones, which are actually in the shape of fruit. And they were £1 each from Primark. And of course, I'll be taking all of my spray bottles with me, which has everything in from baby oil to main detangler. And you'll definitely need to bring some sort of shampoo. And if you do have a grey or a horse with white socks or any sort of white on them, then I'll definitely recommend getting some some stain remover as I literally use this all the time at camp and of course I'll be taking some hoof oil with me with my hoof oil brush as your horses do get marked every day on tack and turnout so they'll need to be looking very smart and I'll be putting all of my hoof oil and wash things in this little box here having storage boxes is so useful because you'll be using them all the time to store things like body protectors your helmet rugs and things like that I definitely recommend getting ones with lids if you can just because sometimes you'll have to keep some things outside and if it rains you don't want them to get wet it's also so useful to have some sort of cloth or flannel or even makeup wipes or baby wipes just to remove any stains and it's also really good to have lots of towels because you're always washing things if it's your tack or your horse and things like that I would definitely purchase yourself some sort of permanent marker like a sharpie and I definitely recommend writing your name on everything you have or your horse's name just so then you don't lose anything and nothing gets muddled up. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If there's anything that you don't have to take to your pony club camp or you have to take to your pony club camp then comment down below because I'll find that really interesting and it might help others because I know that all pony club camps are pretty similar but there are like some differences. And tomorrow I will be uploading the vlogs of sort of the whole week of what I've been doing preparing for camp and things I've been getting ready so I hope you enjoy that and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye!